So every once in a while, someone will post their expectations about what a CS grad should know coming from college. And this post is a really good example of the debates that happen online about like what should you know during an interview, what is fair game to be asked during an interview, and what is just a silly question. So his post is, I have a very simple question I ask during phone screens. Print each level of a tree on a separate line. 90% of CS grad candidates just can't do it. Someone needs to investigate these universities. And so here is the problem. Basically, you have a tree and you're supposed to print out one. And then you need to print out the second row here, which is two and three. And then you need to print out the third row, four, five, six. So he's asking this on a phone screen. He's basically calling you. And he's going to say, hey, how would you traverse a tree and print out each level? Granted, I think on a phone screen, like visualizing this type of stuff would be kind of difficult. So I wouldn't even ask that during a phone screening if I did phone screenings. But overall, I mean, I think this is a fair game. Like if you just graduated from a CS degree, you had to take data structures and algorithms. At least I did back when I was in college. And you are going to be taught how to do recursive trees using def for search. You will also be taught breadth for search, which is actually how you solve this problem, right? You do a breadth for search, which is going to take the first node. And then it's going to traverse and take the lowest level. And then it's going to traverse and take the next level. So you could potentially, so you could potentially use a breadth first search algorithm to solve this. But not only that, like there's a lot of other algorithms that you're taught in college. I remember having to learn Dijkstra's algorithm. We had to implement that. I remember, I remember having to learn about dynamic programming and edit distances. And we had to uh, implement those type of algorithms. So there's a lot of stuff that you learn in college. And being able to identify when a certain pattern can be used to solve the problem, that's like part of the thing, right? And you should be able to kind of explain how you'd solve this. And even if you don't know breadth first search, there are ways to solve it without breadth first search. So I think it's kind of important to point that out. So my opinion is if you are a recent CS grad and you can't solve this, I think you should probably go back and kind of review your data structures and algorithms because I guarantee you, you were taught how to solve this at some point in your university and you probably forgot. But let's dive into the code in case you may not know and let's just try to solve this a rudimentary way and then also try to solve it with breadth first search. So we need to first create a tree that kind of has these nodes in it. All right, now I am going to use AI to generate a tree. So I'm going to say uh, const root node is equal to, and then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say generate me a tree. I'll say a binary tree with, how many nodes does he have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six nodes with values one through six. Max depth of three. This is just to get the data structure going. So this is like what a tree structure could potentially look like. Basically, you have an object and that object points to other objects using like a left and a right. And that has another object reference with a left and a right. So that's kind of how, you know, a graph would look like, at least in JavaScript and most other programming languages. So now what we want to do is we want to traverse this tree. And I'm going to show you the basic way you can do it with a death first search, just so you like at least have something you can talk about during an interview. So I'll just say like print tree and that's going to take in a node. And the way this is going to work is we're going to go ahead and just console log the value of the node like this. And then we're going to say if the thing has a left, then we'll print it out. And if it has a right, we'll print it out. Okay, let's just use AI because why not? It's going to write exactly what I was going to write. And let's run it. So let's just run node test. And notice that it prints out one, two, four, five, three, six. So it is traversing the tree, but it's going in a particular order. It's going one, two, four three, five, six. Okay. This is like a death first search. And typically it's going to go down a path until it hits the very end. It's going to go back up and then go over one and then keep going. So you might think to yourself, okay, I can't solve it with a death first search. I need something more elegant. So one thing you can think about is every time it goes deeper inside of this recursive traversal, maybe we can keep track of the depth. And so you have to ask yourself, well, how do you keep track of depth? Well, you could actually just do an argument right here and I can default it to zero. And then when I print the tree, every time I go either the left or the right, I just need to increment the depth by one. Okay. So every time you kind of go deeper into this tree, you're just incrementing the depth a little bit. And so what this allows us to do is we'd actually print out the depth. And if you see this, let's run it again. You'll see it prints out one, two, four, five, three, six. And these are the depths associated with it. There's depth of zero, one, two, one, and two. So again, if you don't know breadth for search, try to think of other ways you can solve this problem. One way is you could have some type of different data structure that you can keep track of the depths as you're traversing. So I could say const levels, and we can just go ahead and have an array here. You could do a map if you want to. 
And what we could say is we'll say if there is no level at that depth, then we're going to go ahead and just make one like this. And I'm actually just going to let AI kind of do this for me. OK. So as you're traversing this tree, you found a depth of 0. We go ahead and just make a new array here, and then we push that in. And so after you traverse this whole tree, instead of calling this print tree, we'll call it traverse. And then we're going to go ahead and just print out the levels down here. So let's run this. And now you'll see that at level depth of 0, we have 1. Depth of 2, we have 2, 3. And then a depth of 2, we have 4, 5, 6. So you you basically took the tree and you reformat it in a different type of data structure. And this is going to help you print out row by row, right? We need to print out one and then two, three, and then four, five, six. So with that, we already know these different levels. We could just simply just loop through them. I'm going to go ahead and just say four, let level of zero. I'll just go ahead and run through that. And we'll just go ahead and just run this. So let's just run it one more time. And now you'll see it says level 0 is 1, level 1 is 2 and 3, and level 2 is 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so basically you solved the problem, but maybe you didn't solve it the way that the phone interviewer wanted. Honestly, I think the phone interviewer is just hoping you'd say the word breath for search. But let's try to also solve this using a breath for search. So the way a breath for search kind of works is you don't do recursion. You just have like a queue. And we'll kind of go through here. I think AI is just going to do most of the work for me. So I'll say const q is equal to nothing. And then we're going to go ahead and just push the first node into that queue. We have to at least keep track of the depth that we're at. So we'll just do this. And we'll say depth is going to be equal to 0 here. We can also get rid of this. We don't need to print anything out down here anymore. And then we'll also just rename this to print. There we go. Go ahead and close that. OK, so now that we have a queue and we push the starting node into that queue, what we need to do is basically loop over that. So I'm going to say while the queue.length is greater than 0, we're going to go ahead and say shift off the current value. So that'll give us the current node in the depth that we're at. And then let's move this stuff. We're going to put this inside of here. And I'm going to say if there is a left, instead of recursively calling this function, we're actually going to say queue.push. And then we are going to just push those nodes with one extra depth in here. So that's basically going to keep on pushing each level into the queue. And then what we actually need to do is we're going to console log the node. We'll say node.value. And if we run this, it should work, but it's not going to solve the problem as asked. So let's just run this real quick. We get the same outputs, one, two, three, four, five, six. But got, now we got to figure out, like, how do we get these on the same line if they're in the same depth? OK. So what we could do is I'm going to make a string up here, and I'll say let output is equal to empty string. I'm doing this because of how console logs work. They always like append a new line character. So instead, what we need to do is I'm going to keep track of the last depth. So I'll say last, last depth is equal to 0. And then let's get rid of this console log. I'm going to say output plus equals the node value. And then we're going to just go ahead and append an empty string to this. But if the current depth is greater than the last depth, then we will go ahead and say output plus equals a new line, and then we'll keep track of that last depth. So again, we're doing a breadth first search algorithm. But every time we get a different depth, we just need to append a new line character. And after we kind of ran all this, what we could do is just print out the output down here. So let's just try this real quick. Let's run this. We get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's a little issue with this algorithm. I actually need to move this line and probably move it down here. right? So let's just run this again. And there you have it. So now you have 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. So this is how the breadth first search algorithm kind of works. You basically keep pushing in nodes, and then you keep on popping the nodes you pushed. And then down here, the adjacent neighbors basically are going to get pushed on to the very end of the queue. And so that's going to process the tree level by level. So that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and learned something if you are kind of new at programming. I do think understanding how to traverse graphs and trees is actually very important, especially when it comes to like JavaScript and like the DOM. You just need to know how to kind of do this. It's not super important in your day job if you're just doing like, you know, CRUD REST APIs, you're just building out a UI, but you will encounter some problems in your day to day if you're a front end engineer or back end engineer where you might need to traverse a tree like this. Especially if you're doing like a game engine or you need to like do some type of traversal for NPCs or AI. Very important to understand how to kind of do this type of algorithm. 
So yeah, leave a comment if you guys enjoyed this and uh, maybe I'll do some more algorithm type of videos in the future. Like always, have a good day. Happy coding.